And good evening. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with breaking news. Clashes outside a Trump rally that just ended in San Diego. A heavy police presence. They've declared it an unlawful gathering. Reports of arrests, protesters throwing eggs. It's been a pretty tense scene. Seen as Paul Verkamen joins us now from San Diego. Um, what's, been, what's the latest? What's been going on? We've been watching this now for the better part of an hour. Well... Anderson, and right off camera here, we have, are starting to see some fights break out, and others are trying to make peace here as we see Trump supporters are on one side of the street, and they're clashing with anti-Trump demonstrators on the other side. And now as you look off to my right, riot police with nightsticks, helmets on, visors down, are moving all of us uh, down the street in San Diego, not far at all from where the Trump rally was held earlier today. And now the police getting very physical and with moving people off. We're obviously being pushed to the side. And we'll be able to give you a better perspective in just a second when we settle. But it got very tense here and they declared this an unlawful assembly, Anderson. And that's often a precursor to making arrests. And Jordan, if you can dip down, you can look and see on the hips. So a lot of these officers are those plastic, flexible handcuffs. They can use those in an emergency to make arrests. There have been several arrests so far. But just as you came to us, they made this major move to try to separate, as you saw, these two groups who are throwing things at each other. So, Paul, if you can't try to see any glass, but they throw. Paul, if you can, just try to explain what we're seeing. We, we see a line of police officers, obviously, in riot gear on the left-hand side. We see... Uh, some folks with uh, it looks like a, a pro-Trump sign there on the right. So are the, you're saying they are the police now in between the two groups? Not completely. What happened was they did separate the two groups with a whole series of barricades, K rails, and all sorts of uh, other riot police. At times they were hundreds of yards away, but as they spilled back onto the streets of San Diego, many of them they go to their cars. The anti-Trump demonstrators and the people leaving the Trump rally blended together. And I should also say there's quite a number of people who I don't think were part of either side and then just sort of showed up and got involved in this. So they're not completely between them right now. As you look in front of me, Anderson, they're just sealing off this part of the street. But over there in the middle, you can see there is a blending. You, you see all the anti-Trump signs far off in the distance, about 30 yards, and then right in front of me, these are all Trump supporters. So they will indeed have to make a move at some point to again separate them. And they did earlier, but they just came right back together again. And, so now they're trying to box this group in and declare this an unlawful assembly and threaten with an arrest. I'm sorry, Anderson. No, no. Go ahead. Sorry to hear. And Paul, earlier uh, I was watching uh, some of your video uh, in, in the last hour on CNN, and it looked like some objects were being thrown. I couldn't tell exactly what was being thrown and to what effect. Well, it was what we saw was mainly plastic bottles and some eggs. And in fact, I'm going to have Jordan, my cameraman, just show you what, what the, one of the targets was. Excuse me. Jordan, go ahead and tilt up. They threw some eggs against this building right there. And I, I guess that's about the third floor. They were holding up Trump shirts and uh, basically chanting and taunting some of the crowd below that was anti-Trump. So that was one of their targets. And then they were just throwing things across the street right over here at each other. But I should note, I did not see any major injuries in terms of somebody throwing, let's say, glass or a rock or anything heavy. Not that there's a lot of that uh, available right. right here, but once again, you can look to the other side, Anderson, and the, the taunting is beginning once more. And, and so is, um, because the groups aren't necessarily separated at this point, are, are you still seeing, I mean, we're seeing some people talking to the police, and, and, and I'm not sure what they're saying, they're pointing at the police, but... Uh, are there still arguments going on between pro and, and anti-Trump uh, individuals? Yes, and a lot of shouting, a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. But by the way, this, this, has, this has been a rather calm moment right now as they've set up this, this line of riot gear clad officers on both sides. They seem to be getting a little bit of a handle on it. It was much worse, at, let's say, five minutes ago. But no doubt, some of the pushing and shoving will start again. As you can look right in front of me, the people in front over there are wearing red Trump caps, and they're being taunted, and their caps are being pulled off, etc., as they move through. And that's where we've seen the skirmishes and 
some of the fights. They're, they're throwing some water on some of the, the Trump people leading as well. And obviously, riot police are trying to move everyone along here. They're, they seem to be making a pincer-like move to go ahead and surround all these people. And I'm sure we're going to hear them issue here. It looks like we've got another arrest right in front of us, Anderson. And it's from the inside out, it's such a scrum. Sometimes it's hard to see what led to someone being detained. And we can't say in every single instance that somebody being detained is being arrested. I mean, there is a difference. Sometimes they grab somebody because they were swallowed by the crowd and they just wanted to get them out of there. But in this case, you can hear them chanting, let him go. And Paul, uh, you, he you is being let off. You talked about what was going on uh, right before, essentially, we went on air. We have some of that video, and I just want to call for that now, uh, just to give a sense. Um, and this was earlier, and you probably can't see it, Paul. This is a wide shot, uh, looks uh, taken from uh, over an overhead angle, where you see sort of the size of crowds, and you and see some things being being thrown, and, uh, and it looks like some people may be trying to calm others down, but it definitely seems a very tense, uh, tense scene. Uh, great word. It's extremely tense. It went well for a long time today, by the way. There were peaceful protests. There was dancing on both sides. There were a lot of Trump supporters who were shouting their allegiance to Donald Trump, and there were a lot of Trump protesters who were basically decrying all of Trump's policies. And then, as you said, you could see people throwing things. And what's going on right now in front of us is these are Trump supporters, and they're leaving, and they're walking away, and they're being taunted by anti-Trump demonstrators. And so the goal, obviously, right now for the police here in San Diego is to separate the two. And I should tell you, this is a tremendous show of force. All these blue uniformed officers are San Diego police. You might see way off in the distance, the green uh, jacketed officers, etc., are San Diego County sheriffs. They've called in mutual aid from everywhere. There are hundreds and hundreds of officers here, and they are ready to suppress a riot if needed. You can't see right here, but we've seen them. They've got those yellow butted, yellow or orange butted, I should say, beanbag guns. They're prepared to use those if they need. We saw a SWAT vehicle off in the distance as well. The goal right now is to calm the tensions here. But as I said, every time a Trump supporter walks through this gauntlet, if you will, they either get uh, yelled at or they throw something at him, and you can see his cap right there, clearly on the Trump side, Anderson. So now those, those Trump supporters, are those people leaving the venue? Has the venue already cleared out? Because obviously that's always a concern when you have people who have been inside coming out. You mentioned they had come out earlier. Is, as far as you know, is the venue pretty much empty now? From what I can tell, yes. And as I told you, they went through great lengths to walk these people leaving the venue at, at times several hundred yards away from the anti-Trump demonstrators. They had to go downstairs or around all sorts of metal mazes and move around. But I think the trouble started here on the streets of San Diego when some of them had to walk back to parking structures. Often the distance right over there, there's not a baseball game tonight, but there's a lot of parking over there. That's actually the San Diego Padres Petco Park. That's where they play the game. That's also where a lot of this parking is. So as these Trump supporters or attendees of the event left, then they couldn't help but sort of, for lack of a better term, rub shoulders with the anti-Trump demonstrators, and that's where all the confrontations and the taunting and the throwing things started. We have seen some punches thrown. Yeah. But I also should tell you this, Anderson, to characterize it. We saw a guy take a swing at a, a guy with a camera, and he looked like he had nothing to do with the protest. He looked like he was just a mentally deranged guy that walked into the middle of the scrum and decided to throw a punch. Uh, we're looking again now at live pictures again from a different vantage point, Paul. Again, you can't see it. Uh, uh, an, this is an overhead uh, angle. Uh, looks like uh, some people with uh, anti-Trump signs there. Um, and there you see police uh, moving in again, forming another, uh, whether they're, they're forming a new line or whether they're leaving, it's hard, uh, hard to tell. Uh, just sort of trying to, it looks like they're trying to kind of solidify a new, uh, a new line um, of, 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 of their positioning there. Let's take a look. We've got some, uh, some images from earlier where I think we see one of the, the sort of the, the confrontations that was going on. Um, and again, Paul, I know you can't see this. You see some things being thrown. It looks like a number of people, though, uh, put, there's a lot of pushing, a, a lot of shoving as people kind of are, you see people yelling, kind of arguing there on the lower left-hand side uh, of the screen, people getting in each other's faces. 
sort of, in some cases, just looks kind of trying to wait for something to happen, and then, of course, it does. There's some, there's pushing, some punches being thrown there. Again, this, uh, this occurred a short time before uh, we went on air. Um, Again, this is a scene that has been going on now for quite some time. So, Paul, what we're seeing is we're seeing a, this is from earlier. Uh, one of the uh, one of the, the, the I guess fight you could call it that uh, took place. A lot of the pushing, the shoving, but it certainly seems to have calmed down. Again, now we're seeing this earlier shot. Um, it looks like there was sort of a lot of people kind of egging people on shouts being being uh, given Paul and then someone would throw a punch or someone would push and then it would kind of escalate quickly and then dissipate. Is that about right? Yeah, that's a great characterization. And in fact, you would hear some of the, the Trump supporters saying, let's build that wall. And then you would hear the anti-Trump demonstrators say, tear down that wall. Then they would get nose to nose, start arguing with each other. And here's what's playing out right now. It's another cluster of Trump supporters leaving or walking this way as the police and riot gear walk behind them and they are now being taunted again by anti-Trump demonstrators. As I said, this is where they've been shoulder to shoulder walking away on the streets. And there were many, many of these shouting matches. Uh, there were a lot of, uh, you know, insults being thrown back and forth. And we got some pushing and shoving going on. Jordan, wheel this way, please. Right over here, looks like a full-on fight is breaking out now, right now in front of me, Anderson. And there's peacemakers in front. They've been trying to keep this from escalating. They're yelling all kinds of things, including go home, you redneck. And this is just basically what has been going on. Some of these people are trying to leave and they're being taunted and you see the peacemakers trying to get between them. Some of them are actually anti-Trump supporters or were in, in the protest, but they want a peaceful resolution to this. So there are actually people you're saying, and we see one gentleman there uh, in a red shirt uh, standing in between yes. what I imagine is a Trump supporter and some people who are opposed to Trump who continue to follow this man uh, as he's leaving. So there are people trying to kind of stand between the, the, the two sides. That's exactly right. We've seen a number of uh, them break up what could break out into a full-fledged fight, fight by inserting themselves between uh, basically a Trump supporter and uh, clusters of enraged anti-Trump demonstrators. We should also and this has been the challenge is when these... Go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Paul. Uh, we should also point out a reporter from inside the venue said that the, 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 the event is over itself. The venue is uh, cleared and Donald Trump is actually, we're told, in the air. Uh, 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 he's no longer even uh, on the scene. Uh, and there, what we're watching, just joining us there, a, a Trump supporter who's basically being sort of continually followed by a group of, I assume, anti-Trump people. He's yelling at them. Uh, they seem to be yelling at him. Uh, there are some people in between them trying to keep them apart, um, but it's, uh, it is a, a chaotic scene. It, it does seem, Paul, just from, from the vantage point now we're looking at, which is an over-the-head shot, and I'm not sure where it is in relation to you, but it, uh, we see that poli long pol police line on the left-hand side of the screen, and now what looks like a smaller group uh, is sort of basically hemmed in, at least on two sides, by police. Does it seem like the crowd itself is dissipating? Well, they're trying to make it dissipate, that's for sure, Anderson. I, I was in that uh, little, those two rows just a, a short second ago, and you know, every time I look around, I see uh, more and more law enforcement officers. As we told you before, these are all San Diego County Sheriff's deputies helping out their partners in the city of uh, San Diego because they needed to call in mutual aid. And even if you can just stop for one second here, we can see even another group of officers in riot gear. I know there's federal agents on the ground as well. So they're calling in everybody possible to try to quell this and get this under control. It's not been a situation where we've had, let's say, mass lines of people running at each other or trying to get 
past barricades. It's just been those little skirmishes that you've been seeing where someone starts throwing something or someone starts pushing, then a punch or two is thrown, and then they are able to get people out. So the next move I guess they make is try to sweep through here. And as I said, you can see here comes another group of officers ready to get in the middle of these uh, pushing, shoving, shouting, and arguing crowds on both sides of this debate. Okay, And Paul I think it bears repeating that we, we don't know that they're all supporters for Trump or anti-Trump. Some other people just seem to have shown up and, you know, got into the middle of it. Right. Some people, obviously, sort of this is an opportunity for some people who just want to get in the middle of something like this. We're going to take a, a short break. Uh, Paul's going to continue uh, to be on, on the scene. Uh, we're going to continue to follow the developments in San Diego in the hour ahead, talk to our panel about not only what we're seeing, but also what else has happened in the day of politics. Also, Hillary Clinton seen as untrustworthy by the majority of voters in a number of polls. Trump's numbers on the trustworthy issue no better, in some cases worse. We're going to look at what is driving that opinion coming up next. Well, we're continuing to monitor the tension and the clashes that we've been seeing in San Diego where a Trump rally uh, has ended and some confrontations between pro and anti-Trump uh, demonstrators uh, broke out or, uh, or at least venue participants. The venues emptied out. Donald Trump has left the city entirely. However, as you can see, police, some, uh, some others, some protesters, both for and against Trump and others who are just kind of wanting to be there are all out, still out on the street. So as Paul Verkamen, he joins us once again. Uh, Paul, just what's the latest on this? It looks like more police are, are starting to move in. That's right, and they're making a major move right now. What they're doing is they're uh, condensing the size of the rally. There were some people who were sitting down on the floor, and they basically propped them up, and now they're moving them uh, away from that area where we saw the bottle uh, throwing, plastic bottles, we should say, and eggs earlier. And you can tell they're using uh, their nightsticks and whatnot to create a buffer between themselves and the members of the crowd. And... Where I'm trying to get a sense for how far they want this crowd to move. I guess they're stopping right here. Somewhat remarkable about all of this is not far from here, literally 20 yards behind me, Anderson, they've run the little red trolley, which is uh, you know, transit in San Diego. I don't know how they've been able to do it all day, but they, they have. And I don't know if this move has anything to do with that possibly coming through here again or if they decided to suspend running that trolley. But obviously, uh, tensions right now between... Mainly right here, these are anti-Trump uh, demonstrators and San Diego police and riot gear. And, and Paul, you may not be able to have seen it from your vantage point. It looks like we saw at least two people uh, or two people we saw uh, being uh, cuffed uh, and moved uh, off, uh, off the, uh, the site. Um, not sure if they'll be formally arrested uh, or, or, or just, well, I'm not sure exactly what's, uh, but they're clearly being taken away. And they continue there to chant as he is being taken away. We see that individual on the right-hand side. Do you know where, Paul, where those arrests are being made in relation to where you are? Because we're seeing kind of two different screens here. One where arrests were being made from a kind of a camera that was looked like a, an overhead uh, scene. And that's what we're seeing right now. And on the left, uh, more of a street level, which I think is your camera. Right. So we're on the street level. And so what we see is we see people being taken away, some of them in those flexible white plastic handcuffs, some of them not. Sometimes they're taking somebody away. Uh, we're being moved again, Anderson, hang yeah, on one second. You can see now this very clearly now on both, on both cameras, yes. the police moving in uh, in a coordinated yes. way. They're making a major move. And is the idea on that just disperse yeah, the got, crowd, keep them moving, try to just encourage everybody to leave? Exactly, and also part of it was to separate the Trump supporters from the anti-Trump demonstrators. And so I think they're trying to move them all to one side. That's the direction that we're headed right now of the street and get them away from. We're literally on these rail lines right now. So we'll see where they have everybody stop. But as I told you several times in both English and Spanish, they declared over bullhorns that this is an unlawful assembly, often the precursor to arrest. Okay, and they've stopped right here as they're next sort of move they're, they're trying to shrink the area of where the protesters can stand and now to our left making another major move and they're getting support from as we said agencies all over san diego county and we're walking backwards as best we can anderson as they are now pushing us toward 
the center where Trump spoke earlier today. And we're now headed toward the ocean across the street by this group of officers who, as I said, got their riot helmets on, visors down, nightsticks out. Making an aggressive move in a stand right and at, here. And at this as they point, they try to disperse this crowd. At this point, Paul, at least in the crowd that we are seeing, it appears to be more sort of anti Trump demonstrators. It doesn't look like there's too many clashes uh, within the, the groups of people. It looks like it's mostly now police moving folks who don't want to leave um, or who are slowly uh, leaving. Um, but it, you, we, we're, are you seeing clashes between people now still? No, you're exactly right, Anderson. The people who are being moved with me and the camera that I'm on, that street level right now, are pretty much all anti-Trump demonstrators. And you can hear some of them chanting, whose streets are streets. And they're being moved toward the convention center where Trump spoke. It's, we've got a step right now. Hang on, Jordan, good job. We're walking backwards on the street, obviously, and I didn't want to see my cameraman go down so now they're reforming closer to the convention center and it looks like this is where they're going to hold the line for now and, and paul and i think it's always important the in the intent a, of the i think it's always important and difficult sometimes in a situation particularly from ground level to get a sense of just how many people we're talking about um as far as you can tell i mean from from what I've been watching over the course of the last hour or so, it seems like the groups were larger before, and whether maybe that's because there were more pro-Trump people as they were leaving the venue. Um, it does seem like the group has gotten smaller, sort of the more die-hard people who are continuing the anti-Trump protests. Um, but can you get a sense of just the area we're looking at? Is this pretty much contained to just the area that we are seeing? I mean, is it all just one uh, clump of, yes. of people? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk over here, Anderson. I'm going to give you a better view. It does seem like it's contained. It definitely seemed like there were a lot more demonstrators or protesters out here before. Excuse me. We're going to cross through media. And it seems as if they've got a better handle on it. We definitely saw, we definitely saw a lot more anti-Trump demonstrators. We definitely supporters. And there's a little way for us to get up here and give you a better glimpse of what's going on. Here's another arrestee right in front of us. And as things flare up, it's not always easy to, to find out why someone was arrested. You'll see a skirmish, a punch thrown, someone taken away. And we can't even say if they were definitely anti-Trump or pro-Trump, but here's about the best vantage point of all of this. If you look out that way, there were hundreds of more anti-Trump demonstrators out here on this street before. And then off in the distance, we'll say about 200 yards at 1 o'clock. That's where you saw us earlier. That's where you saw this extremely aggressive move by all of these police officers in riot gear. Over this way, about another 100 yards at, let's say, 11 o'clock, those are all, for the most part, people who left the convention center and their Trump supporters. So they've effectively, as we were live, cut these two groups off. And then right here in front of us, playing out again, is the taunting that we've seen and heard all day. The anti-Trump group and the Trump group going at it. Yeah. And now you're seeing, uh, it looks like that train, believe it or not, I, I can't imagine they're going to do this, but it might be coming through as the crossing guards are coming down. And maybe that's why they were just so, so sure that they wanted to break up that crowd and, and, and they moved through with all that force that you saw, Anderson. We're going to take another short break, but you can see on the right-hand side of your screen from the over, uh, overhead shot just the, the numbers of law enforcement personnel who clearly have a, a strategy in place, clearly have uh, you know, clear lines of, uh, of demarcation of where they want people to be uh, and where they want people to, to go and how they want them to disperse. Uh, and they, you know, it, it seems very organized on the law enforcement side uh, and the crowds are getting smaller. And I always think it's important to point that out so you don't get a sense that this is, uh, you know, bigger than, uh, than, than it may actually be. We're going to take a short break. Our coverage of this and the day in politics continues in a moment. 
I've been just uh, watching an arrest uh, right before we came back on air, part of a very large police presence right now on the streets in the area outside the San Diego Convention Center. Scenes of a substantial but apparently shrinking protest shortly after a uh, Trump rally uh, ended. Once again, we want to check in with CNN's Paul Verkamen at the scene. I understand the police are, are making kind of another move uh, trying to, uh, to move these people along. Yeah, a couple things are happening here right now. They've made a big move, Anderson, and they're trying to disperse this crowd. And then if we look over to our right, we can see a whole bunch of people who are running down the street. And I'm not sure if there's anything that touched that off, but they're sprinting that way. And then you've got a group of officers in riot gear also running that way. So it seems like this entire protest is headed in a different direction. And the crowd is, it seems so far, successfully being dispersed. This is a far cry from what we saw earlier when you joined us and you saw that pushing and shoving and throwing of different objects. But it looks like they're going to go ahead and stand, make their stand right here. And a lot of the crowd just sort of willfully ran down the street. All right, we'll continue to monitor that, Paul. Uh, thank you very much for, for your coverage, also for your crew. Continue to be careful. We're going to bring in the panel as we continue to look at this. Let's bring in uh, New York One political anchor Errol Lewis, who's covered Donald Trump for years. New York Times presidential campaign correspondent Maggie Haberman. Trump supporter Kelly McEnany. Former Congressional Black Caucus executive director Angela Rye. And Republican strategist Susan uh, Del Percio. Um, as we watch this, uh, Kelly, I mean... What, what do you make of, of what you're seeing? Well, first, it's worth saying there's no place in political discourse for violence. That's just uncalled for. It should not be condoned. It should not be welcomed in any way. It should be dismissed. That being said, you know, it's worth tracing where this began. And I think Chicago back in mid-March is where we saw protesters show up with the intent of shutting down a Trump event. Thereafter, at many Trump events, we've seen similar tasks. Uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, you saw police windows getting smashed out. Uh, you saw uh, protesters setting fire to Trump. Trump memorabilia in Costa Mesa, California. You had a, a young Trump supporter who was bloodied, uh, beaten down. I think it's a sad state when you can't attend a rally in peace without having personal effects snatched from your body, without witnessing uh, cars being smashed in front of you. I think we should be able to congregate in peace. Protesting is fine. Violence is not. We should also point out that uh, earlier during Trump rallies, we did see protest. Not, you know, I'm not talking about today, uh, but months ago, uh, individuals. Uh, the fights uh, inside Trump rallies and people being uh, pushed around on, frankly, on both sides. Uh, Angela, wh what do you see from today? So a couple of things. I mean, I watched this scene and frankly got very emotional. Um, I'm seeing this and I'm hearing some of the things that are yelled. You, the, you, the reporter talked about someone yelling, build that wall, and some and other folks yelling, tear down that wall. And I heard with my own ears someone yell, go back to Mexico. And for me, it's not about um, the fact that Donald Trump got or had protesters outside of his rallies um, in starting in Chicago, Kaylee, you mentioned. This is about the type of rhetoric that Donald Trump has espoused, frankly, since before he was a presidential candidate. And what you're seeing, um, frankly, are what happens when you refuse to listen to each other? What happens when Nobody, nobody feels heard. What happens when the oppressed get tired of being oppressed? What happens when assumptions are made about people? There was a guy earlier who was wearing a t-shirt that said, I just look like an illegal immigrant. And so if we take a step back from all of this and realize that this comes from a real place of misunderstanding and prejudging the fact that people can be called thugs even though they're graduates of some of the most prestigious universities um, is frustrating to me and I think we have to Remember, just like they were chanting at this rally and I heard growing up going to rallies and protests with my dad, the people united will never be defeated. And we have to stand united on something at some point. Susan, do you think this uh, helps Donald Trump in some ways? Does it hurt Donald Trump? It hurts both both sides of the issue. Uh, it hurts Donald Trump. It hurts the Democrats. This kind of discourse is bad for everybody. This is not one-sided. This is, When you look at it, both sides are engaging in it. What's really interesting to me is that it used to be in the days people used to rally outside an event and then once the cameras got them and the people went into the event, they left and everyone went home. Now these folks are st staying at these events to protest and argue against each other. It's not even unifying against the, the speaker. This is a very personal, deep feeling of very frustrated, angry people. Mm. Maggie, how do you see it? I mean, I think, that, I think that's right. I think that uh, looking at this, um, I think you have to take Chicago as an isolated incident. I think you have to take this as an isolated incident. 
but you do have to look at uh, a collection of protests and wonder what the Cleveland Convention is going to be like. And that's what I, I keep thinking about. Um, you know, uh, Kelly said before that there's you know no place for violence. I don't think you heard the candidate who is being protested say that. And I think that that is going to be the push he is going to have repeatedly in the lead up to the convention is to you know make very clear that violence is not to be condoned. And to be clear, doesn't mean it should be condoned on the other side either. You saw somebody burning a Trump hat. That's but at that's every not single rally, he plays a tape saying there's no place for violence. It's not permitted. Here. Donald Trump has dismissed violence more than anyone in this campaign. Well, that, that, after the that's first Chicago rally, he dismissed it 14 times on Don Lemon. Thereafter, he dismissed it 10 times on Hannity. He has dismissed violence. We have a society. He did early on, on but, but just that's to accuracy, I mean, he, I mean, so. we all know, we all saw early on in this campaign him saying, you know, I'd like to punch that person. In the face. Uh, this you person, know. maybe this person deserved to get roughed sure, up. There have been a lot of statements before no, violence started breaking out that. at these rallies. He's made more that statements should not than have that. Been made. But Kelly, I attend thing. these we rallies and I cover them. That's just not true. We have a so. societal problem. It's bigger than Donald Trump. And it started in Ferguson when you saw buildings being burned down. We Ferguson. saw violence in Baltimore. There has been violence. It's not just Donald Trump rallies. There are people out there with an intent to disrupt. They want to be seen. They want to be on camera. It's more than a candidate. Kelly. It's a problem that, frankly, Kelly, is on the left. Do you Ferguson, really, do you really yeah. think that people are risking their lives just to be seen on camera? I don't think anyone's risking their lives because the people throwing the punches are at the Donald Trump supporters. We've seen... I, 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 there's a Donald Trump supporter who I your candidate love, offered to I would pay love the legal fees one, for for knocking someone down I would to love the ground to, in North Carolina. I would love to see someone enumerate the number of times Donald Trump supporters have engaged in violence because I've, I've tried painstakingly on the internet to find these times. There have been three incidences just, at just, rallies. But you know what, there have been three, three, but, but we've seen Kelly, is that no matter how it happens, time, but no matter what happens, just the, the way it's perceived is that this is a Donald Trump problem. And Donald Trump has to work harder to, around it. Whether or not it's true, it is definitely perceived that Donald Trump is the cause of this. People are protesting him and his policies. I, I don't know that aggressive. everybody perceives it that way. I, mean, I think a lot of people perceive this, I mean, to Kaylee's point, as these are people who are trying to stop Donald Trump from being able to speak. These are people who are opposed to Donald Trump. And again, I'm not advocating that position. I'm just saying I, I don't know that everybody sees this. I mean, I, I'm looking at my Twitter well, right now. Spurred for, I should say it's spurred from Donald Trump. I mean, this is someone, it's, it's his policies that are mostly it, getting it attaches right to right him. It, it, ends yeah. up, it ends up attaching to him. I yeah. mean, there have been 20 people who ran for president, and there isn't one other candidate that's consistently drawn this kind of a response. The images that we're seeing here, the, the masked... Uh, different sort of police forces and they've been very disciplined by the way in San in San Diego yes. clearly they're trained yes. clearly they're professional they're taking their time nobody's kind of falling out of the ranks and lashing out or anything like that but it's still what an, what an awful image of how we pick the next leader of the free world and it's something that is going to be used in ads and it's going to and it's going to be used by d down the line to say that if you need a president who's going to bring the country together this is not the guy. well I guess I guess that was my question about who does this hurt most. I mean, I, I assume some voters will see this and think, wow, is this what we're in for, for, you know, up until the election or even after if Donald Trump becomes president? And others will see this as, well, this makes them rally toward Donald Trump because they feel this is unfair yes. that he isn't being allowed to, or I mean, he's being allowed to speak, but that people are trying to stop him. The, the protests against him, I mean, that is definitely a, a real issue, um, and he absolutely has a, a right to speak at his rallies, and those protests are being done because that's the main way, um, that, those are his main events, that's how he communicates with his supporters, um, and he absolutely uh, has a right, and, and anyone would eject uh, protesters, everyone does. The difference is the saying, I'd like to punch them in the face, I would pay the legal bills, and that is a difference. Um, and, it, and it does attach to him, as Errol said, in a different way. I think what we saw with Trump throughout this week, just taking it away from tonight for a second, um, after Trump won the Indiana primary and the, the race ended much quicker than we all expected, no contested convention, he was suddenly the presumptive nominee. We heard a lot about how he was going to be more presidential in tone, he was going to shift. He clearly doesn't want to do that. He clearly likes you know, how he won in the primary. And he is running in a lot of ways, uh, and Dan Balls wrote about this in the Washington Post, that it's accurate, he's running against the Republican brand. So he is borrowing that nomination. It might help him appeal to Democrats, but it might also turn off some Republican voters. We don't really know how this is gonna play yet. We gotta take a quick break. We're gonna continue uh, this conversation as we continue the live coverage from San Diego when we come back. Welcome back. Continuing our live coverage, protesters, police on the streets in San Diego following a Trump rally at the convention center there. Some clashes broke out, pushing and shoving, and some uh, blows between anti and pro-Trump forces. 
Police declaring the gathering unlawful, forming lines, advancing on protesters, dispersing many, arresting some. I want to bring in uh, back our panel. Also now joining the con conversation is Basil Smeichel, executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. He is a supporter of, uh, of Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, as we continue to watch this, and it really does seem to have been dis dissipating, so I think it's important to, to point that out and not make too much of it as a continuing ongoing thing, although clearly the police, uh, as, as I think Paul Cameron was saying, have this very well in hand at this stage. Um, Basil, I mean, do you see this continuing at, as and just escalating as we get closer to election day? I don't know about escalating, but definitely continuing. I think just listening to your panelists before I came out here, I do think there's a high correlation between the language that he's used, the rhetoric that he's used, and the activity we're seeing on the street. I don't think the protesters want to be on camera. I don't think the protesters have a sense of uh, entitlement. I think what they are sensing is that there is this attack on uh, communities of color, historic communities of color, um, poor people. Um, and I think this, this rhetoric, uh, which doesn't seem to be dissipating, it seems only to be getting stronger, um, is, is, I think will promote more of these types of protests. I don't know if it'll escalate. I personally don't want to see violence uh, being uh, being done here, but th these folks have a right to protest, and um, and I think you'll continue to see it. Oh, just for accuracy's sake, though, part of protesting is getting on camera. Protest. I mean, if you're protesting and no one's there to see it, I mean, it's like a tree falling in the forest. So I mean, I mean, I've been in protests, and I can tell you, when you point a camera in some directions, there are people who want to get in front of that camera. I'm not saying all the people. I'm not. I don't want to paint it with a broad brush, but. I don't want I to also say no, I totally there. understand what you're saying, but I, but I want to underscore this is not about vanity. This is about, these are some real issues that I think fo have made folks very nervous. I think Donald Trump has voiced, has given voice to a lot of folks and a lot of ideas and opinions that there are a lot of people that didn't think we're still there in this country that I, I think are surprised to see it. And, and I think it's appropriate for people to come out and protest against it. I want Kayla to respond to that, but, but I just want to go quickly to Paul Verkama, because Paul, now, it, we just, as we came back, it looked like there was something of a scuffle. Uh, and again, it looks like police are now kind of continuing. I mean, I thought this had largely dispersed, but it does look like police are still continuing to try to move people along. Yes, they're moving people down. This is Harbor Boulevard in San Diego. And as you said, a little bit of a scuffle broke out just a short while ago. And uh, police, at one point, you see he's dousing this gentleman's eyes. Uh, somebody shot pepper spray as they were trying to move people down the street. Uh, tempers flared between police and one of the protesters. And here's a woman who's getting very emotional over here as they move us around. Let me see if I can try to listen to what she's saying. That is okay, America. That is okay for them to treat us like this? We are Americans. We are here. They cannot treat us like this. They cannot do that to us. I cannot believe this. Now you're crying on camera. Dude, don't hit him. Dude, let him go. Don't hit him. Hey, don't hit him, you guys. Just let okay, him so again, uh, now we're seeing... As the okay, go ahead, Paul. There's been a couple people who have been in the middle of standoffs all afternoon long. And as I said, in some instances, you can't definitely say they're a Trump supporter or not a Trump supporter. Anyway, this gentleman has been in the middle of some things. and He might be getting arrested right now in front of us as the police make a run after him. We're going to head on down the street. And it looks like he's being arrested. Yeah. Hang on, Anderson. We're being backed up. Go ahead. It, it does seem, I mean, one of the tactics, which obviously we've seen now, and police have sort of been, I, I think, kind of learning from other demonstrations, is they do try to identify people who are uh, continuing actors uh, in these events. And when I say actors, just continually, uh, you know, present. Uh, they try to identify people who may be spurring other people on or, or taking agitators or taking a larger role, uh, even a leadership role, and move quickly, take them out, uh, either arrest them or just detain them, and then reform their lines. And it seems like that's what we just witnessed. Absolutely. Almost on cue, I said it looked like he had been in the middle of some of the scrums. That was the gentleman in the uh, Laker jersey. And they did isolate him. And you saw they went after him and tackled him because it looked like he was going to square off with another one of the demonstrators. And again, a very aggressive move as they come down Harbor Boulevard we're near the ocean in San Diego. 
And as we back up, we're trying not to trip over any of these uh, various barricades that have been knocked over. But behind the police as well, you can see Anderson looks like armored personnel character uh, carriers. Excuse me. This is clearly, uh, I think, maybe one of their last moves as they get people away from the convention center, which is off to my left in the background. And the crowd has thinned out dramatically. And now someone's thrown a plastic bottle. Uh, at the officers. That was off to my right. They didn't hit it. We're going to go ahead and give you a pan now down the street and show you what's sort of left of the dispersing crowd. Uh, they're moving over here toward this bridge. Also right up on top, officers on a pedestrian bridge keeping watch over all of this. And we're down to less than 100 demonstrators in this area right now. And it was clear to me that there was probably at least 500 earlier these would mainly be anti-Trump demonstrators, but there are some Trump supporters mixed in, and that's why I think they went ahead and arrested uh, the gentleman in the Kobe Bryant jersey. He looked like he was going to square off with somebody, as I said, Anderson. Right. Yeah, he, he had a sign saying free speech area. Uh, all right, we'll continue to watch that, but it definitely seems to be, again, the police on the move uh, in very organized fashion, uh, trying to disperse people. Um, Kelly, I mean, again, I, I wanted you to be able to uh, to, to respond uh, be before we went to that. Yeah, you know, I think it's problematic when you blame a candidate for the third party actions of others who cannot engage in civil discourse and instead opt to engage in violence. This is a problem when you have people coming with the intent of squelching speech because they believe less speech is better than more rather than engaging the issue if they have a problem with the notion of building a wall engage that idea don't come and knock out police windows of cars don't put the police lives in danger don't put the trump supporters lives in danger don't bloody the face of a trump supporter in california if you have a problem yes by all means show up get your point across Did you but do not well, engage but in violence but if I could, i've seen it repeatedly but if I could, say i mean first of all i said at the beginning I don't condone violence, but what makes their speech less valid than his? That's the concern that I have, that it seems as though their speech is, is sort of attached to thuggery. That's, I, I think that's problematic because that, that actually well, falls wait, right wait, wait, into, wait, more, that actually falls right into exactly what Donald Trump is saying and why they have a right the to The people going to a Donald Trump rally have absolute right to go right. there, to listen, to be outside, to, go there to and support to leave, their And candidate. to leave in it's peace. To exactly that. So when they're, I mean, this is a confrontation. And as they say, it takes two to tango. I mean, this is not just happening in a vacuum. It's not that the these protesters to the Trump uh, speak, uh, speeches are just showing up and not doing anything to act, you know, egg this People on are either. They I'm are engaged. And the Trump supporters definitely have a right to be there for every right that, that the protesters do. So this is a bigger problem is that now the discourse has become a very into, it, violence has been now accepted as a form of discourse, or at least the pushing and shoving and the, and the in-your-face kind of conversation. Yeah, I, I and that's what makes us all so ugly. I reject the notion that the pushing and shoving belongs exclusively to those who are protesting Donald Trump. I really do. Well, and the I, protesters, the, the Donald Trump people are pushing back. I mean, it's a back and it, forth. But it, 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 no one side owns this. You'd be making a huge mistake to think one side or the other actually owns it. I think that, that my point is that what exactly what I said at the beginning, and that is when folks who are oppressed continue to feel as though they're not being heard, this is what happens. And when you have a candidate like a Donald Trump, who, who literally belittles and demeans the opinions of those who are different. This is the result of that. And I it's, think it's, that... It's, I want you to be able to respond, then we got to get a break. But at the same time, don't forget, the Donald Trump supporters, they're angry, they're frustrated, they feel that they haven't been hurt. They're going to listen to someone who they support, who they believe is representing them and representing their frustration and their anger, too. They're showing up. He has people showing up who have never been involved in the political process. And that's because they're mostly angry and frustrated and they're sick and tired of what they see in Washington and they want someone new. Right. We're going to take a, a quick break. We're going to check again in with uh, Paul Verkamen for an update on the situation in San Diego. We'll be right back. Demonstrations and sporadic uh, uh, clashes on the streets of San Diego after a Trump rally. Large numbers of anti-Trump protesters confronting Trump supporters. A heavy police presence trying to disperse the crowds. That's how it looked earlier on. Things have quieted down substantially. Police have kept a, uh, a very tight lid on it, in part by making arrests using pepper spray at one point, we could see. Mainly relying, though, on sheer numbers and organization and pulling suspected hotheads out of the crowd before violent confrontations could actually take place. Once again, we want to check in with CNN's Paul Verkamen, who's at the scene now. Paul? 
Well, as you can see, they've decided to make a stand here on this is a bridge going over Harbor Boulevard, off in the distance, motorcycle officers and armored personnel car carriers. They also have pepper spray handy just in case. They used a little bit of it earlier to disperse part of the crowd. It seems what they're going to do is go ahead and march them over this Harbor Boulevard bridge in San Diego. Uh, they've got a pretty good handle on things, and as we've been discussing, Anderson, uh, every time you come back to me, the crowd thins out a little bit more, and it has again. They've been yelling, whose streets, our streets. Anyway, Anderson, it's a lot calmer than it was before, and the officers, as we said, are continuing to move them. What they'll do is they'll yell, move forward, and then they'll all step in Moss down Harbor Boulevard here. And I also would like to give a shout out to um, my cameraman here, Anderson, Jordan Gazzardo, and my producer, Jack Hanna, and security for being steady and easy. As you well know, they, they go through a lot on shoots like this and, and we're shooting, able to capture these images. Shooting much of it while walking backwards uh, and being pushed around. So uh, kudos to them, no doubt about it. Uh, we're going to obviously continue to monitor this, Paul, uh, to continue, as you see, the numbers drastically reduced. It now just seems to be much sort of uh, a younger uh, crowd uh, who are uh, sticking with this, uh, being moved along by police, uh, but not wanting to, uh, to fully go away. Uh, and we'll continue to, to monitor this throughout the evening. That does it, though, for us right now. Thanks very much for watching. The CNN film Blackfish uh, starts right after a short break.